All right, man, peace. You know, brothers, I remember all the way back in 1990, which was my first full season watching football. My father took me to go watch the New York Jets play, and they had just drafted a supposedly potential superstar running back out of Penn State by the name of Blair Thomas. And he played very well that day. I'll never forget it. Everyone in the stadium was yelling and cheering for Blair Thomas, but he ended up being a bust. I'll never forget it. And ever since then, I've always paid very close attention to the running backs that were drafted out of Penn State. And that's probably one of the reasons why my overall expectations and prognostications for Mr. Saquon Barkley were initially so low. And I have to acknowledge that it appears as if I'm going to be in error. Why am I saying all this? Because on the Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman show, they had a debate over who is the best running back in the NFL. And of course, Stephen A. Smith asserts that it is Todd Gurley. And Max Kellerman asserts that it is Saquon Barkley. It's just that Saquon Barkley right now does not have the help. And to be quite frank with you, I agree with them both. Because Todd Gurley is currently the best running back in the NFL. Certain people might say he's not quite as talented or does not bring all the things to the table that Le'Veon Bell brings. But let me say this, you will never, or at least you have yet to see Todd Gurley's name appear on the front of the newspaper like you have Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell, to me, he's just more trouble than he's worth. But back to Saquon, I've been highly impressed by that dude. But anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Todd Gurley rushed for 208 yards in the Rams win at the Broncos yesterday. Gurley now has 11 touchdowns this season, the most through six games since Sean Alexander in 2005. Max Kellerman. Yep. Kids are the real deal. It's yep. Gurley the best back in football. He's right now the second best back in football. The best back in football is Saquon Barkley. That's right. I said it and you know it. Let me say this very quickly. <laughs> I'll give Max Kellerman credit for his conviction, but he is a New York Giants fan. All right, so that is a disclaimer in this debate. He is a New York Giants fan. But if we're going to appraise in real time, according to real statistics, we have to give it to Todd Gurley right now, at least for now. But let me also say this. Todd Gurley, the last year that Jeff Fisher was coach, had a terrible season because they did not have a good offensive line and they did not have a good offensive scheme. So it just goes to show you how much a great running back, a great talent can be impaired by the coach and by the scheme. Now let me tell you something. I went through this with Chris Bosh and Kevin Love. On the radio in LA, we'd be talking Marcellus and me, Stephen A, and we'd be doing Sports Nation. I'd say, Chris Bosh is better than Kevin Love. And people would lose their minds. People even from Miami would lose their minds. Yes, because most people are two-dimensional thinkers. I've always stated that I thought that Kevin Love was a bit overrated. Now he's a bit underrated. Kevin Love, when he was in Minnesota, putting up all these gaudy stats, 25 and 12 or 26 and 13, what always stood out to me the most was his shooting percentage. He was a power forward shooting 43, 44% from the field. So what that told me was that he was a player who was taking too many shots and he was taking too many bad shots. Whenever you're a power forward, and you're shooting under 48%, in my view, you're taking too many bad shots, and you're taking too many shots outside of your range. And that's what Kevin Love was doing. When you look at it, Chris Bosh, Chris Bosh brought so much to the table for the Miami Heat that goes unpraised, unlauded, especially on the defensive end. Even though he was only averaging about 14 or 15 points per game, when you look at how well he played defense, it was more like 23 or 24 points per game. Right? Kevin Love's averaging 26 and 13. Bosch is like 13 and 8. Like, I get it. I get it. As the focal point of an offense, the situation he's in, Kevin Love looks great. Yep. And Bosch looks because he's doing all the dirty work and doing it's not it. But if you watch the games, know what you're looking at, you can see Bosch was a better player, more valuable. I remember a couple years ago, Stephen A., let's bring it to the NFL and running backs. I used to argue, and it went till everyone's blue in the face, Stephen A. Gurley and Ezekiel Elliott are both fantastic. Gurley's a little better than Ezekiel Elliott. People would lose their minds. Look at the numbers when Zeke was a rookie. He's putting up. What's Gurley doing? Yeah, because with a bad coach as the only offensive threat, when they're stacking the box every single play, you're not going to get your numbers. But I agree with you, sir. But watch Gurley. He was at least as good as Ezekiel Elliott in terms of his individual talent, maybe a hair better, and I think he is a little better than Zeke. Now here. To me, Todd Gurley and Ezekiel Elliott remind me a lot of the dichotomy that existed back in the 90s between the great Emmitt Smith and the great Thurman Thomas. 
Thurman Thomas, for those of you who don't know, was not only a stellar running back out of the backfield, but he also was a great pass catcher out of the backfield. Thurman Thomas was such a great pass catcher that they could put him in the slot. He was phenomenal. And of course, he was part of the New York Giants game plan and what was in my view, and it's still in my view, the greatest Super Bowl that I've ever seen, Super Bowl 25, when the New York Giants defeated the Buffalo Bills down there in Tampa. Whitney Houston sang the national anthem, and of course, Scott Norwood missed the field goal. It was part of Bill Belichick's game plan to allow Thurman Thomas to slice up their defense, and that he did. I think he ran for something like 135 yards that game. He was unbelievable. But the New York Giants secondary had intimidated the Buffalo Bills wide receivers so much in the first half that they pretty much got taken out of the game. They just knocked Andre Reid around. I mean, they beat the hell out of that man. And by the fourth quarter, the only Buffalo Bill who was potent still on offense was the great Thurman Thomas. But just to get back to the point, Todd Gurley is an even better version of Thurman Thomas. He's faster, he's bigger, he's stronger, and he's just as good a receiver. Here's the crazy thing. Gurley was running behind no line. Gurley, they were stacking the box every time, no other threats. Zeke was the guy behind the best line of football. Saquon Barkley right now? Todd Gurley's on a team with threats all over the field with a great offensive line and an excellent quarterback and an inventive coach, and he's going bananas, right? Saquon Barkley is the only offensive threat on the team. Wow, I had no idea that he had that many yards from scrimmage already. That's extremely impressive. Saquon Barkley, I thought that he was just another workout warrior, but he's definitely proven me wrong team because they're bracketing Odell and Eli can't deliver the ball. The Giants have one of the worst offensive lines in football and Saquon Barkley is showing so much that you kind of know he's the best from the eyeball test. You see the numbers he's putting up. 130 yards on 13 carries. That's 10 yards a carry. 99 yards on, on six receptions. That's over 16 yards, 16 and a half yards a reception. He is putting up Popeye numbers. He is passing the eye test, not just on 50-yard runs where he's scoring touchdowns, but on nine-yard runs where he's evading seven guys and going through tackles. I agree with you, Max Kellerman. I would like to disagree with you, but I, I really can't. Saquon has really shocked me. I, I thought he was just going to be another one of these dudes with huge quads and huge calves who was just going to get stopped in the backfield all day when he got to the NFL. The eyeball test says that guy's the best. The numbers support it. And every circumstance says that he should not be able to show you what he's showing you. That guy's the best back in football already. <clears throat> you finished? First of all, <clears throat> you of all people don't get to make that argument for a couple of reasons. Number one, your objectivity, let's say, is highly questionable with this particular subject. It would be Big Blue, the New York Giants, number one. Number two, um, you weren't saying that a few weeks ago when Saquon Barkley couldn't produce numbers. We all knew why, because it was that offensive line. Now, I have no problem looking at Saquon Barkley and saying from a talent perspective, he might be the best. Now, from a production standpoint, we're going to have to give that to Todd Gurley, the leading rush in the National Football League right now, fresh off of a 208-yard performance yesterday afternoon. We're going to have to give that to him. We're going to have to look at Ezekiel Elliott. Do I think that Ezekiel Elliott is the talent that Saquon Barkley is? No. <laughs> The thing with Zeke is that I'm not quite sure how long the shelf life is on Zeke because as Skip Bayless likes to say, he's a very high contact runner. He does not try to run away from the contact. He runs into the contact. But Zeke is just a great pure natural runner and he brings a lot to the table and he's a better pass catcher out of the backfield than he gets credit for. Now can you put him in the slot like you can a Todd Gurley or how they probably will start to do a Saquon no, or like a Le'Veon Bell who is almost just as good a receiver as he's a running back? No, of course not. But Zeke is a better pass catcher than he gets credit for. But we are in the production business last time I checked. We don't get to just look at somebody and say, the eye test is this, okay? And we know you'll win eye tests, Max Kellerman. Those eyes, absolutely, there's no question about it. The eye contest, nobody's beating you. But the point that I'm trying to make to you, Max Kellerman, is this. Saquon Barkley as a talent, it's undeniable that he's going to be one of the best he could end up being the best. But we don't know it yet because the only the only evidence we've had is because of that offensive line. Now, why why would I bring up the offensive line? Because the same offensive line that you want to praise Saquon Barkley for because they're so awful and look at what he's done 
is the same offensive line that you want to sit up there and say, it's not that bad when it comes to Elon. They're not that bad. This is, just, this is Max Kellerman's words. They're not that bad. But Good point, sir. But when it comes to Saquon Barkley, oh, suddenly they're awful. Same team. Last time I checked, the same dudes that pass blocker for Eli are the same dudes that's run blocking and pass blocking for Saquon Barkley. Here's what I'll say about that, though, Stephen A. Smith. Run blocking is different from pass protection. The schemes are different, and the skill set is different. That's one thing. Number two, of course, Max Kellerman is going to change the facts to suit his theory because he's out on Eli Manning. And let's not forget, he's also in on Colin Kaepernick being the new quarterback for the New York Giants, which tells me once again that there's a certain faction that is paying him or prompting him to make that statement because there's no way in the world that you would think that Colin Kaepernick would be an adequate replacement for Eli Manning when Colin Kaepernick is not known as a quarterback who can get the football to his receivers. So we already know that Odell Beckham is not going to like a Colin Kaepernick should he be brought into the fold. We know that already. Beyond that, there's no way that the Maras would ever bring Colin Kaepernick onto that franchise. They would have fans who would stop showing up to the games. I promise you that. But Max Kellerman said, hey, they're awful when it comes to Saquon, but they're not that bad when it comes to Eli. Oh, so my only, point is, my only point is saying it is saying this. Saquon Barkley's a bad brother. When I see him, I... He is. His fast twitch is off the charts. I really think Barry Sanders. He's that legit. So I'm... Uh, not quite, but he does a great job avoiding tacklers. So I'm not knocking you for that. I am simply saying the production isn't there, not through the fault of his own, it's that offensive line. But in the end, even if the even if you even if everybody agree with you, even if I stood here and agree with you, I would still say, we don't want to hear that out of your mouth because Max Kellerman says they're awful one day and the next day. Oh, that, that's a very difficult point awful. to address. Go ahead. They are awful, and they've gotten worse, actually, recently. Mm. And the right tackle, especially, is the problem. And a right-handed running back, you know, that, that's a problem. I think you know, the blind side line protection is, is not as bad as the right, right. tackle, although soldiers that get that. So it's worse for the quarterback. But they're all the bad. But we'll here's the ahead. bottom line. Saquon has six games so far. The first six games so of his career. 200-yard plus games. Two 200 yards, and every single game over 100 yards from scrimmage. So my point is, when a guy is putting up elite-ish numbers... Behind a terrible line. That's not Eli. Eli has been garbage behind that line. Saquon. Eli Manning has been garbage for most of his career. And I got a lot of Giants fans who get mad at me when I say that. Eli Manning has been garbage for most of his career. Eli Manning has been in the NFL since, what, 2004, 2005, somewhere around there? So he's been in the NFL now for about 15 years. This dude has probably had four good years in his career. And two of them he won the Super Bowl. Has been elite behind that line. And I'm just pointing out that Gurley, Zeke, I mean, it's close. I understand. These are all all-world talents. Gurley versus Zeke. Zeke was destroying Gurley in those comparisons, even though the eyeball test to me said Gurley. But the no well, you know, you can't always go by the eyeball test. You do have to factor in productivity because you, you have some runners that are prettier runners than others. That's what I'll say. I mean, O.J. Simpson was a prettier runner than Walter Payton. But Walter Payton ended his career with far more yards. But the numbers weren't close. I'm saying Saquon is in that girly position, but he's making it close on numbers, let alone eyeball test. By the way, you bring up Barry Sanders. Football fans, between Barry Sanders and Emmett Smith, who were you taking? Barry Sanders. Everyone was taking Sanders, even though... Not quite. Not quite. You take Barry Sanders in the same way that someone would take a chick that has big titties and a fat ass over a chick who knows how to keep her ass at home and, and prepare a good meal and be supportive to her man. It might sound nice early on, but when the moments get crucial, you're going to wish that you made that other decision. Once again, in the playoffs, in 20 degree weather, snowstorm, field moist, I'll take Emma Smith over Barry Sanders because I don't want somebody who's going to do too much playing around in the backfield. I know a lot of brothers are not going to like that. Barry Sanders was tremendous. He was by far the most exciting running back in the history of the NFL, by far. Not even a close second. But when those moments got crucial and you needed four yards on third and three, who do you want, Emmitt Smith or Barry Sanders? I'll take Emmitt Smith. No, Emmitt Smith had the great offensive line, was putting up the numbers. Right, and Emmitt Smith also knew how to use his offensive line. Please understand that a great running back 
knows how to use his offensive line. Because you could just see Barry Sanders was something different. Saquon Barkley is Barry Sanders, but he's 233 yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? Like, here's the problem. Saquon Barkley, when we talk about Barry Sanders, right? Think about Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott is more Emmitt Smith type. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Saquon Barkley is more Barry Sanders Correct. type. Todd Gurley is what? Uh, 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 yeah, he's not. He's the. He's, 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 so there you go. Ty Gurley is more of a Thurman Thomas slash Marshall Falk, except bigger, stronger, faster. Oh, it's stop, 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 stop. But that's not my point. My point is the comparison. What I'm saying is if you bring up Barry Sanders and, and Emmett Smith, two guys completely different styles. I'm saying to you, Gurley, Real quick, Gurley's got a little Saquon I, in him. Oh, I, I, if it wasn't for Saquon, I'd be Gurley all day. If Saquon didn't exist, I'd say don't compare anyone right now to Todd Gurley. But everyone likes to say generational running backs, general generational running backs. Gurley is no joke. Ezekiel Elliott's great. There's one generational running back. I'm sorry. That is Saquon. I'm, I'm sorry. We'll see. I want to see where Saquon's career goes, but he's certainly off to a great start. He's different. Well, people will argue with you that Gurley's right there. He's yeah, that kind he, of guy. He, he is, I'm talking about generational. Talent-wise, generation. talent he's a half step behind that. Saquon. Mm -hmm. Don't go anywhere. But anyway, that's basically it on that. Once again, I do have to put forth my early Mia culpa on Saquon Barkley because he certainly has shown that the greatness that he had in college has transitioned over to the NFL. Hopefully for him, it will last for his entire career. So peace.